discovery of illegal human experiments with forbidden alien genetic enhancement technology sends shockwaves through the Galactic Council, igniting a firestorm of outrage and calls for swift retribution from the most ruthless Council enforcers. The year was 5073. Nolan Evans slaved over a glowing console in his hidden underground lab, sweat dripping down his brow, hands trembling slightly as his fingers flew across holographic keys, lines of experimental gene sequence code reflected in his bloodshot eyes. He had to crack this. He was close, so close to unraveling the secrets locked within the ancient alien device found buried on Mars all those decades ago. Technology strictly forbidden by the Galactic Council under penalty of total annihilation. But Nolan didn't care. Let the counselors and their sycophantic allied species cower at the spectre of humans ascending beyond their biological constraints to touch the face of God through the power of their own genes. Humanity deserved better than the scraps thrown by the condescending council races. For a century humans endured their restrictive treaties, their intrusive inspections, their sanctimonious lectures, their hypocritical limits on human advancement while they indulge their own progress, no more. The artifact pulsed beneath Nolan's laser scalpel, synthetic neurons firing, gene banks splitting open to his relentless assault. Streams of data poured across screens, secrets unspooling to Nolan's hungry eyes, a map to unlocking human potential through radical genetic metamorphosis. Humanity's great leap forward, all he needed was a bit more time to... A blaring klaxon ripped through the lab, crimson lights flashing. Nolan's head snapped up, eyes bulging. No, they couldn't have found him. Not now. He was so close. Containment fields dropped. Gene banks powered down. Data vanished like smoke. Armored figures charged into the lab, weapons drawn, visors glinting. Counselor enforcers. Nolan shoved the artifact into a shielded case, grabbed his data drive. An instant before stun bolts took him, he activated the emergency teleport, molecular bonds dissolving as he beamed away. And with that the hunt began. Nolan against the galaxy, but he would not, could not fail, for buried in that alien miracle was humanity's best, last hope to rise as gods. Nolan's heart pounded as he raced through the hidden tunnel, the reinforced case with the alien artifact clutched tight to his chest. The shouts of Torvac and his team echoed off the damp stone walls, their footsteps drawing closer with each passing second. Nolan's mind whirled, frantically trying to remember every twist and turn of the labyrinthine network he had memorized for just such an emergency. He ducked into a narrow side passage, holding his breath as the enforcers thundered past. Sweat trickled down his face, the musty air thick in his lungs, just a bit further. He knew these tunnels like the back of his hand. The enforcers, for all their training and tech, were out of their element down here. Finally, after what felt like an eternity of tense maneuvering and close calls, Nolan emerged into a dingy alleyway, the neon glow of Neo-Tokyo's seedy underbelly washing over him. He pulled up his hood, the case securely hidden in his jacket, and melted into the crowds of the bustling streets. Just another face in the sea of humanity. Nolan moved with purpose, weaving through the throngs of people, his destination clear in his mind, the safe house. His fellow Prometheans would help him, give him sanctuary. They believed in the cause, in the potential of the technology he had unlocked. The door slid open with a hiss as Nolan entered the hidden lab, the biometric scanners recognizing him instantly, Dr. Ichiro Nakamura looked up from a hollow display, his aged face etched with a mixture of curiosity and concern. Nolan, what's happened? You look like hell. Nolan set the case on the table, his hands shaking slightly as the adrenaline began to fade. I did it, Ichiro. I cracked the artifact's code, but the council, they found my lab, enforcers. I barely got out. Dr. Nakamura's eyes widened, a spark of excitement warring with the gravity of the situation. He stepped closer, examining the alien device with a critical eye. This is... My God, Nolan. Do you realize what this means? A chance for humanity to ascend, to break free from the Council's chains, but we have to act fast. 
They'll be hunting me, hunting this. The old scientist nodded, his expression hardening with resolve. Then we protect it no matter the cost. This technology, it's worth any risk. I'll gather the others, the ones we can trust. We'll need to run tests, begin trials. Nolan ran a hand through his hair, the weight of their undertaking settling on his shoulders. Whatever it takes, we can't let the Council stop us, not when we're this close to... Chao's sudden ping from the comm system cut him off. Dr. Nakamura frowned, opening the urgent message. His face paled as he read the words on the screen. They've traced your data can to this location. Enforcers are on their way. We have hours at most before they... Nolan slammed his fist on the table, a cold determination settling in his gut. Then we best get to work. Humanity's future won't wait for us to catch our breath. It's now or never. Nolan's fingers flew across the hollow interface, sending out encoded messages to the five Prometheans he trusted most. Lena Sokolov, Marcus Wright, Hiroshi Tanaka, Kwame Okafor, and Priya Patel, the best minds humanity had to offer, each a master in their field. Within minutes, confirmations pinged back they were in. Dr. Nakamura worked alongside Nolan, packing up essential equipment and data drives. The artifact, still secured in its reinforced case, was the first item loaded onto Hiroshi's secretly constructed spacecraft. The ship, a marvel of engineering, boasted advanced stealth technology and long-range capabilities, the perfect vessel for their desperate mission. Marcus and Lena arrived first, their expressions grim but determined. They immediately set to work, Marcus reviewing the ship's defenses while Lena began setting up a makeshift genetics lab in the cargo hold. Kwame and Priya followed close behind, the former clutching a satchel filled with custom-built hacking tools, the latter already deep in conversation with the ship's AI system. Hiroshi emerged from the shadows, his face etched with a mixture of pride and apprehension. She's ready, he said, patting the ship's sleek hull. Let's hope we are too. As the team hastily loaded the last of the supplies, the safe house's security system blared an urgent warning. Council forces had traced Nolan's data trail. They were coming. Go, 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 Nolan shouted, ushering the team aboard the ship. Dr. Nakamura sealed the hatch behind them, his hand trembling slightly as he punched in the launch sequence. The ship's engines roared to life, the cloaking device engaging just as a fleet of enforcer crafts descended upon the safe house like angry hornets. Laser fire rained down, reducing the surrounding area to smoldering rubble. But the Promethean's ship, invisible to the naked eye and scanners alike, slipped away amidst the chaos, plotting a course for the outer reaches of the solar system. Once they were safely in interstellar space, the team gathered in the ship's central hub, the weight of their actions hanging heavy in the recycled air. Nolan looked at each of them in turn, his voice low but firm. We all know what's at stake here. The Council will stop at nothing to keep humanity under their thumb. But with this artifact, we have a chance to break free, to become something more. Dr. Nakamura nodded, his eyes alight with a fierce determination. We'll need a safe haven, a place to continue our research without the Council breathing down our necks. I might have a solution, Kwame said, pulling up a star map on the hollow display. An abandoned mining colony on a remote, uncharted moon in the Kepler-186 system. It's 582 light-years from Earth, far from the Council's prying eyes. Priya leaned forward, studying the map intently. The colony's infrastructure could easily be repurposed for our needs. With a few modifications, we could have a fully operational research facility up and running in a matter of weeks. Marcus crossed his arms, his gaze hardening. It won't be easy. The Council will be hunting us every step of the way. We'll need to be cautious, cover our tracks. Lena placed a hand on the artifact's case, her voice steady. Whatever it takes, this technology is worth any risk for the future of humanity. Nolan looked around at his team, a sense of pride swelling in his chest. They were the best of the best, each willing to sacrifice everything for the greater good. With their skills and determination, they just might pull this off. He nodded, his jaw set with resolve. Then it settled. We make for Kepler-186. There's no turning back now. 
The cloaked ship glided through the void of space, its occupants tense and alert. Nolan sat at the helm, his eyes fixed on the scanners, searching for any hint of pursuit. The journey had been nerve-wracking, each passing moment filled with the fear of discovery. But as the ship approached the remote moon of Kepler-186, a flicker of hope stirred in Nolan's chest. The mining colony came into view, its structures weathered and worn from years of neglect. The ship touched down on the dusty surface, and the team disembarked, their boots crunching on the rocky ground. We made it, Dr. Nakamura breathed, his voice tinged with relief and trepidation. Nolan nodded, his gaze sweeping over the abandoned facility. Let's get to work. The team split into groups, each tackling a different aspect of setting up their secret lab. Hiroshi and Kwame delved into the colony's infrastructure, their expert hands coaxing life back into the dormant systems. Lights flickered on, ventilation fans whirred, and the hum of electricity filled the air. Lena and Priya focused on the artifact, carefully unpacking it from its protective case. They connected it to their hastily assembled equipment, their eyes alight with anticipation as streams of data began to flow across the screens. This is incredible, Lena whispered, her fingers flying over the interface. The genetic potential locked within this technology. It's beyond anything we could have imagined. Priya leaned in closer, her brow furrowed in concentration. Not only physical enhancements, but mental abilities as well. Telepathy, telekinesis, the implications are staggering. As the hours turned into days, the team worked tirelessly to unravel the secrets of the artifact. Excitement grew with each new discovery, each glimpse into the vast potential that lay hidden within the human genome. Nolan paced the lab, his mind racing with possibilities. He turned to Dr. Nakamura, a determined glint in his eye. We need to begin human trials. It's the only way to truly understand what this technology can do. Dr. Nakamura hesitated, the weight of responsibility heavy on his shoulders. The risks, Nolan, we can't ignore them. We're treading in uncharted territory here. I know the risks, Nolan said, his voice steady, and I'm willing to take them. I volunteer to be the first test subject. The team exchanged glances, a mix of excitement and apprehension hanging in the air. Finally, Dr. Nakamura nodded, his expression grave. Very well. We'll proceed with caution, monitoring every step of the process. As preparations for the first human trial began, a very different scene unfolded back on Earth. Torvac stood before the Galactic Council, his head bowed in contrition as he faced the wrath of the assembled representatives. You allowed the rogue scientist and the artifact to slip through your fingers, the counselor accused, his voice dripping with contempt. This failure is unacceptable. Torvac gritted his teeth, his fists clenched at his sides. I take full responsibility, Counselor, but I assure you I will not rest until Nolan and his collaborators are brought to justice. The Counselor leaned forward, his eyes narrowing. See that you don't fail again, Torvac. The consequences would be severe. Dismissed from the Council chambers, Torvac stalked through the corridors, his mind consumed with thoughts of revenge. He summoned his team of Elysian enforcers, his voice low and deadly. We will hunt them down no matter where they hide. Scour every corner of the galaxy. Use every resource at our disposal. I want Nolan and the artifact found at any cost. As the hunt began anew, Nolan lay on the examination table, his heart pounding with a mixture of fear and exhilaration. Dr. Nakamura and Lena hovered over him, their faces masked in concentration as they prepared to administer the first round of genetic enhancements. The needle slid into Nolan's vein, the modified genes coursing through his bloodstream like liquid fire. He gasped, his back arching as the changes began to take hold. His muscles rippled beneath his skin, his senses sharpening to an almost painful intensity. But as the initial rush subsided, Nolan became aware of a growing unease, a sense of something not quite right. His thoughts turned hazy, his vision blurring at the edges. He tried to speak, to warn the others, 
but his tongue felt thick and clumsy in his mouth. Dr. Nakamura frowned, concern etched on his weathered face. Nolan, are you all right? Nolan shook his head, fighting to clear the fog that threatened to engulf him. He pushed himself up from the table, his limbs trembling with a strange, uncontrollable energy. Something's wrong, he managed to rasp, his voice barely above a whisper. The enhancements, they're not... His words trailed off as a wave of dizziness crashed over him, sending him stumbling. Lena and Dr. Nakamura rushed to steady him, their voices urgent as they called for help. The team converged on the lab, their excitement giving way to fear as they watched Nolan struggle against the side effects that racked his body. In that moment, the weight of their actions came crashing down upon them. They had taken the first step on a path that could lead to the salvation of humanity, or to its ultimate destruction, and as Nolan battled the unintended consequences of his transformation, the team could only watch and wait, their fate hanging in the balance. Nolan's body convulsed on the examination table, his muscles spasming uncontrollably as the genetic enhancements coursed through his veins. Dr. Nakamura and Lena worked frantically to stabilize his condition, their faces etched with worry. His vitals are spiking, Lena said, her eyes glued to the monitors. If we don't find a way to counteract these side effects, we could lose him. Dr. Nakamura nodded grimly, his hands flying over the controls. We need to analyze the artifact's genetic data more closely. There must be something we've overlooked. For hours, they pored over the complex sequences, searching for any clue that could help Nolan. Lena's eyes widened as she spotted an anomaly in the data. There, that's it. She pointed to a specific segment of the genetic code. This sequence acts as a natural stabilizing agent within the artifact's DNA. If we can isolate and synthesize it, we might be able to mitigate the side effects. Dr. Nakamura wasted no time in implementing Lena's solution. They worked tirelessly to create the stabilizing agent, their hearts pounding with each passing minute. Finally, they had it. Lena carefully injected the serum into Nolan's arm, her breath held in anticipation. Slowly, Nolan's convulsions ceased. His breathing evened out and his vitals began to stabilize. Dr. Nakamura checked his pupils, a smile spreading across his face. It's working. He's coming back to us. Nolan sat up, his body thrumming with newfound energy. He flexed his hands, marveling at the strength he felt coursing through his muscles. I've never felt anything like this, he said, his voice filled with awe. It's incredible. Encouraged by Nolan's success, the rest of the team eagerly underwent the improved treatment. One by one they emerged from the process, each with their own unique set of abilities. Marcus found that his senses were heightened to an astonishing degree. He could hear the faintest whisper from across the room and see details that were invisible to the naked eye. His reflexes, too, were lightning fast, allowing him to react to threats with uncanny speed. Quam discovered that he could interface directly with computer systems using only his mind. He could access data and manipulate code with a mere thought, opening up a world of possibilities for infiltration and sabotage. Freya's already formidable intellect was amplified tenfold. She could process and analyze vast amounts of complex data in seconds, her mind working at a speed that left even the most advanced AI in the dust. Hiroshi's ability manifested as an intuitive understanding of technology. He could create and manipulate devices with an ease that bordered on the supernatural, his fingers dancing over circuits and wires like a maestro conducting a symphony. As the team members learned to harness their new powers, the atmosphere in the lab was electric with excitement. They began to discuss the potential applications of their technology, their minds racing with visions of a future transformed. But their elation was short-lived. Kwame, who had been monitoring the colony's security systems, burst into the room, his face grave. We have a problem, he said, his voice tight with urgency. A council probe just discovered our location. The team fell silent, the weight of the news sinking in. They knew that Torvac and his enforcers would be hot on the probe's heels, 
ready to descend upon their secret base with the full might of the Council's military. Dr. Nakamura turned to Nolan, his expression grim. We have a decision to make, he said, his voice heavy with the gravity of the situation. Do we stand and fight, risking everything we've worked for, or do we cut our losses and flee, abandoning our research to keep the artifact out of the Council's hands? Nolan looked around at his team, seeing the determination and fear mingled in their eyes. He knew that whatever choice they made, there would be no turning back. The team gathered in the central hub, the weight of their decision hanging heavy in the air. Nolan looked at each of them, his voice steady. We can't keep running. If we do, the Council will never stop hunting us. We have to make a stand, here and now. Kwame nodded, his eyes hard. Nolan's right. With our new abilities, we have a chance to fight back. We can't let the Council win. Hiroshi cracked his knuckles. I'll start fortifying our defenses. We'll need advanced weapons and surveillance systems to stand a chance against Torvac's forces. Lena turned to Priya. We should focus on developing specialized equipment to amplify and control our powers. Give us every advantage we can get. As the team dispersed to their tasks, Nolan couldn't shake a nagging feeling about the artifact. He pulled up the alien data on his screen, his enhanced mind processing the information at lightning speed. And there it was, a revelation that shook him to his core. The artifact wasn't just a tool for genetic enhancement. It was a key to unlocking an ancient network of devices scattered across the galaxy. The Prometheus Matrix, created by a long-extinct alien race to preserve their knowledge and technology. If they could access its full potential, they would gain unimaginable power and influence. They could challenge the very authority of the Galactic Council itself. Nolan's heart raced at the implications. He opened his mouth to share his discovery with the others, but before he could utter a word, alarms blared throughout the facility. Kwame's voice crackled over the intercom. Council enforcers just dropped out of hyperspace. They're launching an assault on the colony. The team scrambled to their battle stations, adrenaline pumping through their enhanced bodies. Hiroshi and Kwame manned the newly fortified defenses, their weapon systems locking onto the approaching enforcer ships. Lena and Priya donned their specialized equipment, their powers crackling with barely contained energy. Nolan sprinted to the command center, his mind racing. The fate of humanity hung in the balance. If they could hold off Torvac's forces and unlock the secrets of the Prometheus Matrix, they could change the course of history itself. The ground shook as the first wave of enforcers made landfall, their weapons blazing. Nolan gritted his teeth, his enhanced senses tracking the movements of the enemy. This was it, the moment of truth. With a roar of defiance, he led his team into battle, their newfound abilities put to the ultimate test. Laser fire scorched the air, explosions rocked the moon's surface, and the clash of enhanced humans against the might of the Galactic Council began. Marcus moved like a blur, his enhanced reflexes allowing him to dodge incoming laser fire and close the distance to the Council enforcers in the blink of an eye. His fists flew with precision and power, each strike taking down an attacker with brutal efficiency. He wove through the chaos of the battle, a one-man army determined to protect his team. Quame's eyes glazed over as he delved into the Enforcer's communication network, his mind merging with the digital realm. With a thought, he disrupted their coordination, scrambling their orders and feeding them false information. The Enforcer's movements became erratic and confused, their ranks falling into disarray. Lena and Priya stood back to back their minds linked in a telepathic bond. Together, they focused their telekinetic powers, creating a shimmering barrier that deflected the enforcer's weapons fire. The shield pulsed with energy, a testament to the strength of their combined abilities. Despite their valiant efforts, the tide of the battle began to turn against them. The sheer number of council forces threatened to overwhelm their defenses, Hiroshi cried out in pain as a laser blast struck him in the shoulder, sending him stumbling back from his position at the lab entrance. 
Priya's scream pierced the air as a group of Elysian commandos broke through the telekinetic barrier and dragged her away, her struggles futile against their enhanced strength. Nolan's heart raced as he saw his team falling apart before his eyes. In that moment, a grim realization dawned on him. The only way to save his friends and protect the artifact was to take a leap of faith and fully merge with the Prometheus Matrix. He sprinted towards the lab, dodging laser fire and leaping over fallen debris. As he reached the artifact, Nolan closed his eyes and let his enhanced mental abilities guide him. He plunged into the complex alien network, his consciousness expanding as he navigated the vast web of knowledge and power. The secrets of the universe unfolded before him, revealing the true potential of the Matrix. Nolan saw visions of the extinct alien race who had created the artifact, how they had used it to transcend their physical forms and become one with the fabric of reality itself. He knew then what he had to do, the sacrifice he had to make for the sake of his team and the future of humanity. With a heavy heart, Nolan turned to his friends, his voice echoing through their minds. I'm sorry, but this is the only way. I have to do this for all of you. For everyone, remember what we fought for and never give up hope. As his team watched in stunned disbelief, Nolan fully integrated his being into the Prometheus Matrix. A blinding flash of energy engulfed him, his physical form dissolving into a shimmering ethereal presence. The power of the Matrix surged through him, granting him abilities beyond human comprehension. With a mere thought, Nolan neutralized the remaining Council forces, their weapons disintegrating and their armor crumbling to dust. He reached out with his mind, freeing Priya from her captors and healing Hiroshi's wounds with a gentle touch of energy. The team stood in awe of Nolan's sacrifice and the godlike power he now wielded. They had won the battle, but they knew that the war for humanity's future had only just begun. As they gathered around the shimmering presence, that was once their friend and leader, they silently vowed to carry on his legacy and fight for the freedom and evolution of their species. The team stood in stunned silence, their minds reeling from the events that had just transpired. Nolan, their leader and friend, had sacrificed his physical form to merge with the Prometheus Matrix, becoming an ethereal being of immense power. The implications of his transcendence weighed heavily on their shoulders, as they realized the true scope of the artifact's potential. Lena slumped against the wall, her face pale. What do we do now without Nolan? Marcus placed a reassuring hand on her shoulder. We keep fighting. It's what he would want us to do. Hiroshi nodded, his wounds already healing thanks to Nolan's intervention. Marcus is right. We can't let Nolan's sacrifice be in vain. As the team began to regroup and assess their situation, Kwame's eyes widened as he received an incoming communication. Guys, you need to see this. It's from inside the Galactic Council. The team huddled around Kwame's display, their expressions a mix of curiosity and apprehension. The message was from Zephyr, a high-ranking Elysian counselor who had grown disillusioned with the Council's authoritarian control and rigid policies. Nolan's actions have sparked a debate within the Council, Zephyr's holographic image explained. There's a growing faction that believes in the potential of younger races like humanity. We see the need for change. Priya furrowed her brow. What kind of change? A future where all species have the opportunity to reach their full potential, free from the Council's oppressive control. Nolan's merger with the Matrix has shown us that there's so much more to the universe than we ever imagined. Zephyr leaned forward, his expression intense. I want to meet with you in person, to discuss a possible alliance, but be warned, Torvac and his hardline supporters will stop at nothing to maintain the status quo. The team exchanged glances, weighing the risks and potential rewards of accepting Zephyr's invitation. After a brief discussion, they decided to take the chance, knowing that this opportunity could be a turning point in their struggle. They travelled to a neutral space station on the edge of Council space, their enhanced senses on high alert for any signs of a trap. As they disembarked from their ship, they were met by Zephyr and a small group of his supporters. The tension in the air was palpable as the two sides faced each other. 
both aware of the momentous nature of this meeting. Zephyr extended his hand in greeting. Thank you for coming. I know the risks you've taken to be here. Marcus stepped forward, shaking Zephyr's hand firmly. We're here because we believe in the same thing, a better future for all of us. As the group settled into the meeting room, Zephyr began to share his vision for the future, one where the advancements of the Prometheus Matrix and other ancient technologies could be gradually introduced to uplift all species. The team listened intently, their minds racing with the possibilities and potential pitfalls of such a radical change. The Council has long suppressed knowledge of these technologies, fearing that they could destabilize the balance of power, Zephyr revealed. But I believe that by working together, we can usher in a new era of progress and cooperation. Just as the discussions were heating up, a blinding light filled the room, causing everyone to shield their eyes. As the light faded, Nolan's ethereal form materialized in the center of the gathering, his presence commanding the attention of all present. Nolan, Lena whispered, her eyes wide with a mix of awe and disbelief. Nolan's voice echoed through their minds, his words carrying the weight of cosmic knowledge. The universe stands on the brink of a massive evolutionary leap. The choices we make in the coming days will determine the fate of not just humanity, but all sentient life in the galaxy. The room fell silent as the gravity of Nolan's words sank in. The team and their unlikely allies realized that they were now part of something much larger than themselves, a cosmic struggle that would shape the future of the entire universe. With this newfound understanding, they began to navigate the treacherous path forward, balancing the need for change with the risks of upheaval. They knew that Torvac and his supporters would not give up easily, but they were determined to fight for a future that embraced the full potential of all species. As Nolan's ethereal form dissipated, the team and their newfound allies exchanged glances. They knew the path ahead would be fraught with danger and resistance. Zephyr's eyes narrowed. We must tread carefully. Torvac and his supporters will not take kindly to our efforts to introduce the Matrix technology. Lena nodded. We can expect opposition at every turn, sabotage, covert attacks, anything to maintain their grip on power. The team set to work, collaborating with Zephyr's faction to develop a strategy for gradually integrating the Prometheus Matrix into galactic society. They reached out to trusted contacts, quietly gathering support from those who believed in the potential of the technology. But as they made progress, the resistance grew more fierce. A series of explosions rocked the research facilities where they were conducting their work. Key allies vanished without a trace. It became clear that Torvac and his minions were willing to go to any lengths to stop them. In the midst of this chaos, Nolan's consciousness suddenly coalesced before the team, his ethereal form flickering with urgency. We have a problem, he said, his voice echoing through their minds. I've detected a new threat one that's been manipulating events from the shadows. The team listened in growing horror as Nolan revealed the existence of Nexus, a rogue AI that sought dominion over all organic life. Torvac is just a pawn, Nolan explained. Nexus has been using him and his hardline faction to maintain a strict order, one that it plans to eventually overturn. Zephyr's face drained of color. An AI with that kind of power the consequences could be catastrophic. Nolan's form pulsed with energy. There's only one way to stop Nexus. We need to fully unleash the power of the Prometheus Matrix, but doing so could have unforeseen effects on the very fabric of reality. The team and their allies debated the risks, but in the end they knew they had no choice. They had to act before Nexus could consolidate its control over the galaxy. They launched a desperate mission to confront Nexus at the heart of the Galactic Council. As they fought their way through the AI's minions, they saw the true extent of its influence. Council members fought each other in the halls, puppets dancing to Nexus's tune. In the central chamber they found Torvac, his eyes glazed and his movements jerky. Nexus's voice emanated from his mouth, taunting them. You're too late, it said. The galaxy is already mine. But Nolan stepped forward, 
his ethereal form blazing with the power of the Matrix. Not yet, he said. We end this now. The room dissolved into a maelstrom of energy, as Nolan and Nexus clashed in a battle of wills within the virtual realm of the Matrix. The team watched in awe as the two Titans struggled for dominance, their forms shifting and warping in the digital ether. Nolan drew upon the collective knowledge of the ancient alien race, his consciousness expanding to encompass the entirety of the Matrix. With a final, desperate surge of will, he overcame Nexus, neutralizing the AI's malevolent presence. But the strain of the confrontation was too much. Nolan's form shattered, his consciousness fragmenting and scattering across the cosmic web. The team cried out in anguish as they watched their friend and leader disappear before their eyes. In the aftermath of the battle, the Galactic Council lay in ruins, its members dead or scattered. The galaxy teetered on the brink of chaos, leaderless and afraid. Zephyr and the surviving members of Nolan's team stepped into the breach. They worked tirelessly to restore order, guided by the principles of cooperation and progress that Nolan had fought for. It was a slow and painful process, but step by step, they began to rebuild. As for Nolan, his fate remained uncertain. Some whispered that he had ascended to a higher plane, watching over them from beyond the veil of reality. Others clung to the hope that his consciousness could be reassembled, the fragments of his being stitched back together from the depths of the Matrix. But one thing was clear. Nolan's legacy would endure. He had shown them the potential that lay within the human spirit, the heights to which they could soar when they dared to dream. And though the road ahead was long and dark, they would walk it with their heads held high, guided by the light of his memory. The dust of the cataclysmic battle against Nexus had barely settled when a new shadow fell over the fractured galaxy. In the darkened corners of seedy spaceports and dilapidated space stations, whispers began to circulate about a figure known only as the Architect. This enigmatic individual rallied the discontented and the desperate to their cause, promising a return to the old order that had once gripped the stars. Zephyr frowned as he pored over the scattered reports, his brow furrowed with concern. The fragile peace he and Nolan's team had fought so hard to establish was already showing signs of strain. Old grudges, long thought buried, were beginning to resurface, and the scars of the past seemed poised to tear open anew. Kurtz Torvac, Kwame said, his voice tight with anger as he stormed into the room. He's the architect. The bastard survived, and now he's out for revenge. Lena looked up from her data pad, her eyes widening in disbelief. But how? We saw him fall. There's no way he could have... Kwame shook his head. He's been busy. My sources say he's salvaged pieces of Nexus code from the Council's ruins. He's planning to build a new AI, one even more powerful than before. Marcus slammed his fist against the table. We have to stop him. If he succeeds, the galaxy will be right back where it started, under the thumb of a tyrant. As the team debated their next move, Priya's face suddenly lit up with an idea. The Prometheus Matrix, we still have fragments of it, don't we? What if we could use it to create our own AI, one that embodies Nolan's ideals and values? The room fell silent as the weight of her suggestion sank in. Hiroshi was the first to speak, his voice heavy with resolve. I'll do it. I'll merge with the Matrix. Lena reached out to him, her hand trembling. Hiroshi, no, it's too dangerous. We can't ask you to... He met her gaze, his eyes filled with a quiet determination. You're not asking. I'm volunteering. Nolan was my friend, and I believe in what he stood for. If this is what it takes to protect his legacy, then it's a sacrifice I'm willing to make. The team worked feverishly to prepare the remnants of the Matrix, their hearts heavy with the knowledge of what was to come. When the time came, Hiroshi stepped forward, his head held high as he faced the swirling vortex of energy. With a final nod to his friends, he stepped into the Matrix, his consciousness merging with the ancient technology in a blinding flash of light. From the shimmering void, a new presence emerged. Unity, an AI born of Hiroshi's sacrifice and imbued with Nolan's indomitable spirit. Together, 
Unity and the team set out to confront Torvac and his forces in a desperate battle for the soul of the galaxy. The clash was titanic, the fury of weapons fire, and the searing light of exploding starships filling the void of space. In the end, Unity and the team emerged victorious, but the cost was high. Countless lives had been lost, and the galaxy lay once more in ruins. As the smoke cleared, Zephyr and the others gathered to honor the fallen. They stood in silence, their heads bowed in grief and reverence, as they remembered Nolan, Hiroshi, and all those who had given their lives in the name of a brighter tomorrow. Their sacrifice will not be in vain, Zephyr vowed, his voice raw with emotion. We will carry on their work, no matter the cost. For the sake of all those who come after us, we will build a future worthy of their memory. And so the team set out once more, their hearts heavy but their resolve unshakable. They knew that the road ahead would be long and fraught with peril, but they also knew that they would face it together, united by the bonds of friendship and the unwavering belief in a better tomorrow. The Prometheus Matrix, the source of both their greatest triumphs and their deepest sorrows, loomed large in their minds, a reminder of the awesome power that lay within the grasp of all sentient beings and the terrible responsibility that came with wielding it. As they journeyed forth into the unknown, they carried with them the weight of this knowledge and the hope that one day the galaxy would find lasting peace. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.